Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, going to be doing a endo through a bridge on a canine tooth. Uh, this was a full contour zirconia bridge that I did actually a couple of years ago. Patient called and said something just felt different, uh, a little bit of tenderness to bite down on. Uh, so here's the case. We're just going to do our access and standard endo, and then we'll get into the workup of the case. Uh, so here's some x-rays uh, when we did the spec after the patient called and said they were having symptoms. Nothing out of the ordinary clinically or radiographically really on these x-rays. The 2.5 looked totally normal at the apex and uh, the 2.3 uh, x-ray, you know, you can take an x-ray and look at this thing and say, is there a lesion? Not really. I wouldn't look at this x-ray and say there was anything particularly out of the ordinary generally. Uh, but it turned out that this uh, radiolucency here actually was the infective lesion and it was a necrotic tooth. So this was a case where we didn't have like absolute certainty that it was uh, the culprit tooth, but we were pretty sure and we said that this is probably going to solve your problem. So fortunately, once you do the access, you'll always figure out if the tooth is vital or not. And uh, this one turned out to be the necrotic one. So a uh, cold test was really the uh, the main evidence that we had to go on because and cold test can be uh, can be tricky to do because everybody has different sensitivities of teeth. Uh, teeth that have crowns and bridges on them don't react very predictably at times. But the two five, fortunately, we got a very clear cold response from, and the two three, we got a very clear negative cold response from. Even after reapplying endo ice for you know 15 seconds at a time, a few times the tooth still did not react. So we could say based on the clinical symptoms. More than likely, this is the tooth. Um, this did turn out to be the lesion. Fortunately, you can actually just barely see the outline of the lesion on the post-op x-ray right here, but that's not something that you generally take a PA of and say, that's it right there, and we have our diagnosis. But putting all things together, uh, we ended up uh, getting, uh, getting uh, fortunate with our diagnosis. So into the clinical footage to uh, resolve the symptoms, we're going to make an access into the lingual um, aspect of the tooth. Uh, to do our endo, trying to make it as small as possible through the zirconia. We have relatively thick zirconia here, so we're not super worried that the tooth is going to, or that the fixture is going to fracture, but we are going to warn the patient that we don't love doing endo through zirconia. And um, once we have um, once we have our uh, high-speed access, we're going to go in with a month's discovery burr and prep down until we can see the uh, the pulp chamber. And then we're going to try to get a file down uh, into the uh, into the canal. And once we can feel the file drop into the canal, we'll get a rubber dam on and complete the endo uh, as usual. And we'll typically use 31 millimeter files, just faffing around until we can feel it drop. We're going to open up the um, area where we felt the file drop so we get a more predictable uh, access. We're going to put a rubber dam on, liquid dam to cover up the deficiencies, and then just begin getting our 1504 file down to length with some RC prep and pretty routine endo here just going to take our files to length pretty much all the way down to the green line at least usually the um, glide path file will take down to the red line especially in necrotic cases 25 2504 file is going to be next and we'll take that down to the green line with RC prep and our last two files, we will, this is going to be our second to last file at 2506 uh, that we're going to use the endo activator after um, to st attempt to sterilize the apex. And then we're going to go in with our final file, which is going to be a 3506. Typically, 3506 is pretty much always what I'll finish my endos with unless it's a lateral or a really small tooth where uh, dentin preservation is super important. I've read papers that say that 25 finishing diameter is sometimes just not quite enough to sterilize the apex, but 35 is a better number to finish at. So we'll hit, take our 35 to length. Um, and then this is actually a case where we did recapitulate with the uh, glide path file because it can be difficult to get a puff on long rooted teeth. So we're just gonna take our glide path file to the red line to make sure that it just peaks out the apex slightly so that we know that our irrigant is going to um, sterilize the lesion. We'll re-irrigate and then activate. And then that's gonna be uh, the finish the prep of the procedure. 
um, will be ready to dry and restore. So there's the there's the access and orifice ready to dry and restore or an obturate. So we'll take finish with a 35 and um, dry and fill with a 25. These are F2 paper points. I think they're uh, this is a 06 taper, so slightly smaller diameter, about the same taper as the last file that we used. And then to um, to obturate, I'll take the flowable bioceramic sealer tip all the way to the end until it binds and then retract it one millimeter so that I know that it's not going to be um, shooting out the apex and then fill it up passively and uh, slowly retract as the uh, as the orifice fills up and then uh, we have the uh, orifice filled with um, our sealer material then we're going to take our filling uh, GP cone and just kind of tamp the material down to try to get it all the way down and slightly past the apex. So the tooth is uh, filled and we're just going to remove the excess about five millimeters past the cable surface so that we have some uh, some space to restore the access. And we're just going to do that with a high speed and then clean it up with a slow speed. about five millimeters or so down into the access cavity and that's pretty much good so we're gonna restore five second phosphoric acid etch throw a rinse and dry fill it up with equia forte wait five minutes for it to set and then um, and then trim it back to the cable surface before coating and sending the patient home case like this we're always going to tell them that uh, your symptoms are not going to resolve overnight in fact they may even uh, worsen um, just from us kind of stirring around in there uh, but you won't have another acute exacerbation and it takes time for the bone to heal back in the lesion to heal so you'll notice slow and steady improvement in the coming months you'll be able to bite down on the bridge with full force um, at some point in a matter of months so that's that case